Hi, I'm Connie Christians, video editor for ToyMakingPlans.com. I put together this series of videos for you as toy makers to learn how to become better videographers. This is a great opportunity to connect with your viewers and share your expertise, the tips and tricks on how to make your toy projects with your viewers. I'll share tips with you on how to set up your video camera and how to set up your room to get the best video. Sound and light, that's all video is. And so those are the two important things you need to pay attention to and I'll run through that on this first part of the video. There are three stages to making a video. Pre-production, production, and post-production. And post-production is video editing. That's what I do. So the other two parts are up to you. And while I can fix a lot of things with editing software, I can't fix everything. Let's face it, the better video that you shoot, the better job I can do making your toy projects look good. First, let's talk about your video equipment. HD is best. Everyone knows what HD is, right? HD, or high definition, is everywhere. On flat screen TVs, webcams, video cams, digital cameras, even on your smartphone. It's easier than ever to get awesome footage with any number of devices. HD, or high definition, is better than SD, or standard definition, by giving a denser, sharper picture. There are more pixels per square inch. See these little squares? They're pixels. This means sharper video pictures. And the picture size is unique to HD. It's 16 by 9, whereas SD is 4 by 3. So you see, if you send me an SD video, it's more of a square that I either have to stretch or crop to fit into a long rectangle for HD. And you don't want to do that because SD is a less sharp image, so when you zoom in, and crop out important information around the outside, it's going to look a little blurry. Once you have your trusty HD camera, check your settings. And check settings by shooting a test video. Every scene is different, so you should do this every time you shoot. Auto settings may work very well for most situations. But the main takeaway for you as a toy maker is to always shoot a test video. Your environment may change just by a little, but that may make the big difference on getting the best shot of the day and then having it ruined by the video not being quite right. Set the resolution to the highest setting. This will give you the best picture possible. Your camera's highest setting may be 720 by 480, which is fine, but go higher if your camera has a higher setting. Check the exposure settings. You may have something like Scene Mode or AE, which is auto exposure. Portraits, sports, beach, snow, high speed, they're all examples. And there's usually an auto setting. Check the white balance. Wait, have you ever checked a white balance? Look for the WB setting. Most likely you will have choices for daylight, cloudy, tungsten, fluorescent, or something like these. There will be an auto setting and maybe a custom setting. The right selection will show the true colors of the project. Use the camera's LCD viewer to be sure the white objects in the room are truly white and not orange or gray. Start with the auto setting, but if the white doesn't look white, try some of the other settings. And don't forget your custom setting if you have it. If you have no large white objects around, use a piece of white paper in front of the camera. Just make sure the lighting on the paper is normal and not in a shadow. Turn off any digital effects this is black and white, sepia, and the like. Set the focus to auto, and if there are settings for quality, set it at the highest setting, something like super fine. And turn off the time and date stamp. Mount your camera to a tripod, or securely place it on a flat surface at the correct height. You really should have an adjustable tripod. But don't break the bank on this one. There are lots of really good adjustable tripods out there at a really good price. So shop around. And as we all know from watching action films, handheld shots are really shaky. And your arms are going to get really tired holding a camera for any length of time. I can fix some of this jiggling. But your completed video will be a lot better without the shakes. Sound quality is so important. Let me say that again. Sound quality is so important. If we can't hear what you're saying, we're not going to watch your video. 
може да се защити водоотпорни лако. You have two choices. Set the camera four to five feet in front of you or get a wireless mic. I say wireless because as a craftsman you need both hands for your demonstration, right? But keep it simple. Use your video cam. Some video cams may not even have a port to connect an external microphone. Sada ćete da zalepimo motore i zadnje krilo. Even if your face isn't on camera, say you're demonstrating something with your hands. Keep the camera close to your voice. Don't set it across the room because hard surfaced floors and walls will create a muffling echo. And I can't fix that. Pay attention to background noises too. A bird singing outside the window may not be so bad, but noisy traffic or the neighbor's barking dog or even a noisy air conditioner will be very annoying in the background. Close the windows and the door, turn off any noisy appliances and tell anyone around that you are recording. When you're demonstrating a project using saws and drills, don't try to talk over your tools. Turn the tool off, explain what you're going to do, and then demonstrate. I'm going to walk you through the steps I take when routing small template pieces. Once the shop system and router are turned on, you will not be able to hear me. Lighting can be tricky. This is why it's really important to do a test video. Other than the correct exposure, two things can occur, underexposure and overexposure. If your pictures are grainy and dim, that means there's not enough light in the room. If you add high-powered bright lights, you may wash out colors and definition or even have a shiny face. I usually recommend natural light as much as possible. A bright sunny window can go a long way to giving the correct exposure. But don't sit in front of the window and don't point the camera at the window. Instead, put the camera between the window and the toy project or the person that you're shooting. If you have a window, you can even try different times of day. Different types of light occur throughout the day. But what if you don't have any windows? Start by turning on every light in the room and experiment with your camera's AE and white balance settings and adjust what you can. Now aren't you glad I told you about those camera settings? If you're working in a room without a window, try changing out your light bulbs. Try using daylight adjusted bulbs. I mentioned the subject of pre-production before. Here is how you can create better shots before you turn the camera on. First, write out a script. It's always better to write a script than to talk on and on. When creating a script, stick to short descriptive sentences that explain in a clear, simple, step-by-step -step way how to do the job. Hold each shot long enough for the viewer to be able to work out what's going on. Then, when I edit your video, I'll make sure the video is long enough for the viewer to keep up with what's going on, but not so long that they'll fall asleep. Give each shot some clip space. This is a pause at the beginning and end of the shot. I usually count to two under my breath, so I have enough room on both ends of the shot to blend clips together without cutting off something important. So I've mounted the template onto the plexiglass, attached another piece of half inch plywood underneath, adjusted the router bit to the proper height, and now I'm going to make a new template. So don't forget to leave a pause on each end of your shots. And finally, when you have all your video files saved on your PC or Mac, please be organized. Group the subjects and label them. Uploading and downloading large video files can take a lot of time. Organization makes the job go faster. So I thank you in advance for being organized. I hope you understand how important it is to have good sound and good light in all of your videos. I'd like to think that we're a team of videographers and video editors. And in a perfect world, I'd come and shoot your video for you in your very own workshop. But we live in a digital world and this video is the next best thing. I can reach out to all you toy makers and share the tips with you in a video about video. Thanks again for watching today. 
If you have any questions, contact me at toymakingplans.com. I'm Connie Christians, video editor for toymakingplans.com. Happy shooting and happy toy making. Thanks for watching part one of our video series on how to make better video of your wood toy projects. Be sure and watch the next part of our series where we talk about how to set up the perfect shot.